A lot of people ask why I recommend krill oil instead of fish oil. Krill oil and fish oil both have EPA and DHA, which are really important fatty acids. So you could take fish oil, but fish oil tends to be less stable than krill oil because krill oil contains astaxanthin. This is the stuff that makes krill red. It's also the stuff that makes wild salmon red. It's a very powerful antioxidant that can protect your body from radiation. There's a rumor going around though that fish oil actually thins your blood and so does krill oil and it does and this is why a moderate amount is okay but if you take an excessive amount for a long period of time it's not okay. You can actually get more inflammation from taking too much even DHA or too much EPA, the really valuable omega-3s and if you're getting just vegetable omega-3s that are not EPA or DHA those don't actually work very well for forming EPA and DHA. It's very hard for your body to make EPA and DHA out of those. So you must have DHA to have a fully functioning brain. You must have EPA for fully functioning cell membranes. Too much isn't a great thing. Super high quality is a good thing. When I take too much krill or too much fish oil, I actually get nosebleeds because they thin your blood so effectively. If you're exposed to a short-term inflammatory assault, say you walked into a building damaged by water and you got mycotoxins or you ate something that was wrong or you got sick and you're all puffy, or even if you whacked your head really hard and you got a concussion, 30 grams a day of fish oil or krill oil might be just what the doctor ordered, but doing it all the time is not going to end well for you. This is good for five days. I use this entire thing of salt in that amount of time and I feel great when I do that. When my sodium levels are low, I don't feel good. My, my resistance or my resilience is not where I want it to be. I don't resist stressors in my environment the way I should. So I'm supporting my biology with salt. And you are not a good person if you don't put salt on your food when you want it. You should actually salt your food if your taste buds tell you that you should have salt. See the head of foam that's formed on it? This is similar to what you get with a latte there are actually little bubbles still coming to the surface, just like a freshly steamed latte. 